NASA just reopened its lunar contract, allowing Blue Origin to compete directly with SpaceX for the moon landing. But Elon Musk has just exposed a major flaw in Blue Origin's lunar lander, one that could jeopardize NASA's entire Artemis mission. Is Blue Origin really ready to take the lead? Or is this another costly mistake that could set America back in the space race? Let's dive right in. Officially, NASA said the move was about fostering competition. The agency wanted a plan B in case SpaceX's Starship fell behind schedule. But behind that polite phrase lies a political truth. This decision wasn't made in a lab. It was made in Washington. Under growing pressure from the White House, NASA was told to accelerate lunar operations before China lands its first crewed mission. The optics of falling behind Beijing were unacceptable. So NASA reopened the contract, allowing Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin to compete again? On the surface, it sounds fair. Diversify, add competition, move faster. But here's where it gets messy. Blue Origin has never launched a single payload to orbit. Not once. SpaceX, meanwhile, has launched over 600 missions, built reusable rockets, and ferried NASA astronauts to the ISS at a fraction of traditional costs. So when NASA picked Blue Origin, Musk didn't hold back. On X, he wrote, Blue Origin has never delivered a useful payload to orbit, let alone the moon. It wasn't just sarcasm. It was a wake-up call, because Musk knows what's really at stake, the future of America's dominance in space. To understand this decision, you need to see the bigger picture. NASA isn't acting out of logic. It's acting out of fear. Artemis, the $93 billion lunar program, has been under intense scrutiny. Deadlines keep slipping, budgets keep inflating, and China keeps advancing. Beijing's Chang'e program has already proven precision landings, automated lunar sample returns, and next they're planning a permanent outpost at the moon's south pole by 2030. That's why NASA's acting chief, Sean Duffy, introduced Plan B to make it look like progress is accelerating. Blue Origin's smaller blue moon, Mark 1 lander doesn't require in-orbit refueling like Starship, so on paper it can reach the moon sooner. But that's only half the truth, because while Blue Origin's lander can reach the moon, it can't stay. Let's talk engineering, not politics. SpaceX's Starship HLS is a behemoth, 50 meters tall, fully reusable, with a payload capacity of over 100 metric tons. It runs on methane and liquid oxygen, designed for rapid refueling in orbit, so it can deliver large habitats, rovers, or even base modules to the lunar surface. That's the technology needed for a sustainable human presence. Now compare that with Blue Origin's Blue Moon, Mark 1, a smaller, expendable vehicle designed primarily for cargo. It can carry about three to four tons. That's roughly one SUV's weight. Fine for supplies, but nowhere near enough to build a base or support a human crew. And here's the part NASA glossed over. Blue Origin's crew-capable lander, Mark II, won't be ready until the 2030s. That's years behind SpaceX's Starship timeline. So while NASA praises Blue Origin for progress, it's really buying time, political time, because Blue Origin's early missions make good headlines, even if they don't move the mission forward. And Musk sees right through it. He knows progress on paper doesn't equal progress in space. But here's where things get uncomfortable. The real problem isn't SpaceX or Blue Origin. It's NASA itself. The Artemis program isn't one mission. It's a patchwork of contracts stitched together by committees, lobbyists, and legacy contractors. The SLS rocket, the Orion capsule, the lunar landers, the suits, all built by different companies with competing interests. It's not innovation, it's bureaucracy in orbit. Former NASA Administrator Mike Griffin warned about this years ago. He called Artemis excessively complex, unrealistically priced, and structurally fragile. And he was right. While SpaceX tests rockets weekly, NASA's SLS launches once every few years, and each flight costs more than $4 billion. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launches cost less than $70 million and land back on Earth for reuse. Every time NASA delays, SpaceX pushes forward. Faster, cheaper, better. 
Yet somehow, NASA's leadership keeps dragging SpaceX back into the same political swamp they were supposed to escape. Blue Origin, to its credit, is making technical progress. Its BE-7 engine is efficient and stable, and its Blue Moon prototype has passed several crucial ground tests. But here's what many people miss. Progress in a lab isn't progress in space. Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket, which will carry the Blue Moon lander, has never flown. The company has spent over 12 years preparing for its first orbital launch, and we still don't have a confirmed date for the second. In that same time frame, SpaceX went from exploding prototypes to landing boosters and flying astronauts. Musk's frustration isn't ego, it's experience. He's seen how real engineering is done through iteration, failure, and learning. Blue Origin's slow, cautious, corporate culture simply can't compete with that speed. Yet NASA, under pressure to look balanced, decided to reward slowness over results. And that's what Musk means when he says, this isn't competition, it's regression. At its heart, this story isn't about two billionaires. It's about two visions for humanity's future. Elon Musk believes in reusability, speed, and sustainability, a path that makes space travel routine, affordable, and scalable. Jeff Bezos believes in stability, control, and government partnership, a slower, safer approach that keeps NASA in charge. And NASA, it's stuck between those worlds. The agency wants progress but fears risk. It wants innovation but hides behind bureaucracy. It wants to beat China, but can't stop playing politics. The result? Paralysis disguised as progress. Every new contract announcement feels like momentum, but in reality, it's another layer of red tape. The space race isn't being lost because of lack of talent. It's being lost because of indecision. Here's the twist no one's talking about. Even if Blue Origin manages to land first, it might still lose. Why? because its system isn't designed for permanence. The Blue Moon lander can visit, not inhabit. Musk's Starship, by contrast, is built to return, refuel, and relaunch, again and again. That's how you build a base, not a photo op. So when NASA bets on Blue Origin, it's not betting on the future, it's betting on nostalgia, on a system that looks like Apollo but costs 10 times more. And that might just be Musk's point. We're not supposed to repeat 1969. We're supposed to surpass it. NASA's decision may look safe politically, but in space, safe can be the most dangerous word of all. Every delay, every redundant contract, every backup plan adds months and billions. And the longer this drags on, the more ground the U.S. loses to China. Literally. China's lunar architecture is straightforward. One rocket family, one long-term plan, one goal, permanent settlement. NASA's architecture, a maze of overlapping programs and changing leadership. If this continues, the U.S. could land on the moon again, only to realize it's visiting a base built by someone else. So here's the real question. Did NASA choose Blue Origin because it's the best option or because it's the safest one politically? Elon Musk says NASA just made a historic mistake. One that could cost America not just the moon, but the future of space exploration itself. But what do you think? Should NASA stick with the proven pioneer, SpaceX, and push for a permanent lunar base? Or is Blue Origin's slower, government-aligned approach the stability we need? Let me know in the comments below. Because this debate isn't just about rockets. It's about vision, courage, and the kind of future we're choosing to build beyond Earth. And this is exactly why Elon Musk warned that NASA's choice could be a major setback for America's space ambitions. The real issue isn't about rockets. It's about vision, speed, and who's truly prepared to lead humanity beyond Earth. What this means is clear. The future of lunar exploration depends on bold innovation, not political safety. The next phase of this race will decide everything. Whether NASA's gamble pays off or if SpaceX once again proves why it's years ahead. Either way, the world is watching. If you found this analysis valuable, make sure to like this video, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to Space Hub for more deep dive stories on the technology shaping our future. 
Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss the next big space update. Because here at Space Hub, we don't just follow the news, we help you understand the future. After NASA's chief publicly warned that no lunar starship landing may happen soon, Elon Musk hit back, declaring that Starship will do the entire moon mission. Mark my words. His reaction wasn't random. It came right after NASA opened new contracts for Blue Origin, hinting at doubts about SpaceX. Behind this decision lies political pressure, competition, and a battle for control of the moon race. Let's dive right in. When NASA's acting administrator publicly warned that no lunar starship landing might happen soon, it sent shockwaves far beyond the space industry. Within hours, Elon Musk responded sharply, Starship will handle the entire moon mission. Mark my words, that clash wasn't just about rockets. It revealed a deeper struggle between innovation and politics, between NASA's tradition and Musk's radical speed. It began innocently enough, an interview on Fox News. NASA's acting chief, Sean Duffy, appeared calm and confident as he praised SpaceX's achievements. Then came the twist. SpaceX is behind schedule. We may need to consider other options for Artemis III. Those two sentences ignited an uproar. Because other options meant one thing. NASA was preparing to bring in competitors like Blue Origin, potentially sidelining SpaceX's starship from the first crewed lunar landing of this century. For Elon Musk and his team at SpaceX, that statement hit like a betrayal. After years of testing, countless explosions, and near